Welcome to the video by DJSPRC. We have extreme bashing to a next level. I have four batteries in front of me. That is, uh, let's say, pretty much badass and serious. Anybody is looking for serious batteries for their X Max. The Creighton 5th scale or the Outcast 5th scale. These are the ultimate ones. From Gen Ace, the Bashing Series 11,004S. 100cc discharge. If you take the, <laughs> the amount of milliamp times your uh, discharge rate, that's a lot of amperage. These batteries will make a lot of vehicle very happy. And they're really nice made. There's a kind of a semi hard case. Um, they do come with uh, EC5s. These are EC8s on it right now. We'll do this one. I didn't do this one yet. Uh, and yeah. This is what I'll be using in the Creighton DBXL 5th scale. Upcoming video on that. Uh, I do have some changes I did to that vehicle. Um, that's something you'll see in uh, one of the next videos, probably coming. But, yeah. They're not cheap. Uh, I think they're around maybe two, close to 200-ish Canadian. Uh, for the Americans, uh, I'll be honest with you, I don't have the listing with me right now. But still, 11,000 milliamp Gen Ace bashing 4S 100Cs discharge rate. Serious power. But let's open this guy here. When you open your case, you're greeted with the pamphlet. And I know half of you guys won't read, but I would suggest you do. There's a lot of great information in this, believe it or not. I read this in the past, let's say. Uh, you're greeted with your packaging of your battery. You take your battery out. And this is the EC5. For some reason, they went yellow. Because normally these are blue from E Flight. But that's awesome. That way you know it's associated with high power. Uh, you do have your normal balance leads. They say do not pull or cut from this. You should hold your connector when you're unplugging it. But we're converting this guy to. I see for EC8. Basically, they could go on, on top of each other. There's a mega different sizes. And the physical barrel itself, you see a difference. And yeah. <laughs> These are gigantic. Uh, basically, they're made for a higher gauge of, uh, of wire. And better contact surface than compare other ones now I do have one in my jig here this is the hot racing jig it's uh, basically taped down to my table here to be able to solder it they do have a hole on the side a lot of people will put their soldering iron on the side I do it differently that's me but let's uh, remove this now, if you are going to do this and you don't have the experience, I would suggest stop. Let somebody that has experience to do this. Bad thing could happen with a LiPo if you do shirt out these leads here. Um, yeah, very bad thing could happen. Ask somebody that knows how to do it. You never cut both leads together at the same time. Always one at a time.
and a little bit of our wire off. Have my soldering iron. And basically I'm gonna tin it, tin, fin, whatever. Put some solder to, uh, on the wire itself. I do have a video showing how to solder EC5s and other connectors. I'm getting a lot of grief saying I'm keeping my soldering iron too close or too long on the wire itself. I'm to the point I can feel the heat right here. It's not going to damage my battery. Uh, same thing, I have a video on how to solder a CC cap. And I'm being told, oh, you're keeping your iron on it too long. You're going to burn the cap, things like that. If you know the CC cap of Castle, the tabs are soldered to the board. If I would heat it too long, those connection would unsolder itself from the board. And I've been doing soldering for way too long. Basically close to 40 years. That kind of shows you my age. Now, basically what I do, I put my soldering in, soldering iron in it. I feed a little bit of solder itself. I keep it there to make sure it stays liquid. Then I bring my wire to it to heat up my wire. When I know my wire is going to be fully heated up, I will insert it. Like it is right now. Oop, now. Sometimes it is a little bit tricky. Now, sorry, you can't really see what I'm doing. And I always try to keep the wire straight in the connector itself. And what I was saying earlier about the heat, it will go down the wire for sure. Right now where my fingers are, I'm feeling the heat. All right, I know it's soldered here. It's still cold. That part I'm not worried. Now I will make sure it doesn't leak out on the side here. That, that one's fine. And one thing I forgot. I forgot to put my connector on. I'm so used to EC5s, you're doing opposite. You're inserted by this way. These guys, you have to do it opposite. Don't do like me. Put your connector on. Now it's going to reheat it up. Shouldn't take that long. Just going to put a little bit of solder into it just to reflow it. Gonna find where's my my holes right here. Just keep warming it up. Because I'm able to see on the side here if my solder is coming loose. And it is. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna keep my iron on it. Huh. Connector is conveniently holding it. Find my positive right here put my connector on and I'm just gonna go back the way it was try to keep it straight as possible and this one's done and then you have to insert it and basically tap it 
or you can even use some uh, channel locks. A lot of people, that's what they do. They'll grab the opposite connector, insert it, and we'll cut the other one here. Now what I'm going to do, not to do this mistake again, I'm going to insert this one here, making sure I don't touch the other side because the other side is live. And I'm just going to push my wire to the end here. Now you could put a piece of tape to prevent it from going forward, but it shouldn't. And we do the same procedure we did with the other one. Heat it up and feed some solder to it. And we go to our connector here. And I don't want to put too much in it. Because if you do put too much, it's going to just overflow. I'm going to put my wire back on both connectors, to both at the same time until it heats up. That way you're heating both of them, you're keeping your your heat in there. And then just keep it straight as possible. I'm a little bit crooked here. But I'm a little bit too late. The connector is hot. Don't touch it. Yep. Yeah. Here we go. Now we do have some, basically it's the uh, solder paste that's in my solder, rosin core. It is hot a bit again. Now I'll make sure not to touch his sister, brother, whatever. Now what you could do is to be careful to do this. The other thing you could do is basically use, you make yourself a scrap one and you can use the, the scrap one that way you don't make sure to shirt out anything. And then what a lot of people will do is grab a pair of pliers And basically, you squeeze it in. I'm not a big fan to do it this way. I prefer to put in the vise and just give it a good tap with my hammer. That one's slowly going in. I'm just going to do the other one. And you just continue until your connector is done. And they're like this one here. Now, if you guys have any comments or questions down below, I'll be glad to answer you guys. And don't forget, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe at the same time. Thank you for watching.